Hey guys and ghouls, one thing I wanted to mention before we get started. There's a, a combiner elbow joint that's facing towards the back. You'll see in the video the transformation that you can lift up the top of the torso and spin it around. If you do so, it'll give you an ab crunch on the front. One click forward, but it's still pretty nice. Just an added bonus. What's up, everybody? It's your favorite Piranha's favorite nerd, and today we are looking at TFC's Big Bite from their Sea Cons, which they're calling Poseidon, which I think we all could have seen coming. They've all used like the Greek motif for all of their combiners, and uh, I kind of like that they're sticking to their guns on that, I must admit. I have mixed feelings on this guy, but it comes with a fair amount of accessories. We're going to set him aside for just a second, and we're going to talk about these two swords, which I can't figure out a way to plug in. Uh, to them, it may be possible somehow, some way, but I, I, I don't know. I, I don't personally care enough to sit here for an hour and think about it. So I've, I've looked at all the obvious, like I see, you know, pegs here and such, but uh, there's very limited ports and and so forth. So I'm just not sure. I didn't see it in the instructions either. But they are this purple pink plastic, and the silver is painted and is painted fairly well down the center on both. Set that to the side, and he comes with uh, combiner stuff uh, for hand and feet and so forth. Uh, looks cool, uh, pointy. Looks, you know, it looks menacing. I, I dig, I dig the hand uh, so far, and it's uh, a lot of hinges instead of ball joints. But this one ball joint is is done fairly well. So we'll we'll, we'll kind of look at how that plays out towards the end. And then we have this fella. Now the instructions don't have these to be pegged on here, and you can also have them the opposite way. Uh, but he is a bit, you know, front heavy, obviously, and you can get him posed. He does have these two guns, one for each of you. You got silver paint on there, which is done fairly well as well. Otherwise, blue plastic, gray plastic. You can open these up. Easy for me to say. And you're supposed to be able to flip out these guns. There it is. He's got to get a grip on her. And then you can close it down, and they're just longer, uh, but they're fine. You know, no no real complaints. But let's let's take a look at the the piranha himself, or whatever this is. Um, not a lot of paint. That's the first thing I noticed. Uh, it's a lot of different color plastic, though, so it's broken up fairly well. I had this weird stain on mine i swear like i'm just that guy man like i am a bad luck guy like if something bad can happen will happen like the things you always heard about that happened to somebody but you've never actually seen that were bad they they happened to me put that down you're gonna fall laura it's a bunch of tomfoolery okay you know how long i've been leaning back in my chair since elementary school and i remember teachers saying it back then you're gonna fall and bust your head open but never once in all my years have i seen some Touche. <laughs> Who knows? <sighs> we got blue paint. It's done fairly well uh, there and there. And then we have a translucent yellow, which I'm not crazy about, but I'll, I'll take it. And then we have these, these teeth there on hinges here and here. And the rest of the teeth are painted silver. These might be translucent as well, these, these front four. The mouth closes uh, to there and opens to there. The arms here are on little ball pegs, or ball joints rather, but you don't get much out of them. You can unpin them and, and move them around like this, you know, but it starts to destroy the sculpt. And it looks, it, it, at first you think it's a good idea, but it, it's really ultimately silly. And then the, uh, the little arm, just to try to show you, it has a little hinge here for the wrist in and out. And then the claws have a hinge as well in and out. And there's a translucent plastic on the claws as well. Uh, which overall does give it some. You can you can kind of pose this good enough to give them a little bit of character, which which I'm into. Got this translucent plastic up here for the fin, and I think that looks good. And and this piece hinges and stuff, but not really for fish mode, but it, it does, and it swivels as well. These are the arms, of course. They're ratcheted here, and it's a really good ratchet, I might add. Yellow translucent there. Uh, swivel for the bicep, but right now it's for the thigh. Okay, that's fine. And then the elbow joint uh, gets you all the way back to there for the fish mode. And then the little toe tilt. Uh, no real uh, way to do an ankle rocker with this sort of design. 
And then on the back here, we have all these ball pegs. Or, uh, I think they're, they're just, yeah, they, I don't know. It's like a ball joint. Uh, yeah, it's like a ball peg. It'll work. It'll work for our, our point here. But, you know, you get a fair amount of range on the tail to show you, like, all the way to there and then back to there, down to there, and well, up to there, which is cool. And then this translucent plastic in the back, and that's pretty much um, the shark mode. I, I don't know what people would want to see uh, size comparison-wise. So I'm going to grab an iGear Sharkticon. And back out a little bit so you can see. So he's, I mean, he's. A, I think he's. I think he's a good enough size personally. Um, now we have a lot to go here, go through here. So I'm probably going to do this in a montage just to cut down on space because it's not very difficult. The transformation of this all. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to go to leg mode, and let's open this up here. Next thing you want to do is you need to take this piece here. And you want to make sure that you have it the right way. So I believe it's like this. So bar up and then this hinge piece down. And it needs to go, you see where that circle is there? It needs to go in there. So in order to do so, you kind of have to pry the, the jaws open. And then insert it. And then close them shut the best you can. And then you can rock these down, these split as well, and they usually split while you're trying to split everything else, so just let it happen, do you know what I mean? And this is on a double hinge, also the bottom jaw, you can get these arms, just tuck them back. So pull this out and then down, and that should slide into place. And I just did the same thing. Oh my god, but just uh, the thing I just told you I wouldn't do. But this needs to be reversed, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix it, and then we'll get back together. And with the power of movie magic, we're right back, and it's reversed. And then this piece clips down. All right, take your piece that you first moved, split it. It's translucent plastic, so be mindful. I found that these two tabs are a good place if you can get your nails in there. Rotate them around on the ball joint. Mo rotate this hinge down and tab them back into the back of the unit and then take the tail flip it up spin this 90 degrees so that that sits nice and flush take your feet or your legs rather rotate them at the hip and then you want this uh port right there and the pink piece so to speak to plug into the side so same on the other side and that'll put the feet in the position that they're uh, supposed to intended to be in. And you can do whatever you want there. You take this piece here and you open it up. Mine has a massive stress mark right there at that hinge. It will fail. It doesn't feel good as you move it either. So just try to move it as close to the base as you can, so to speak. And when it starts giving you pressure, just stop. It's going to break. But there. And that's it. And then you take this turn it upside down and you got your your foot piece and that that slides in there and then you got your connector up there for the for the bottom to go to gun mode take the piece that with the stress mark and flip it up and then you got to bring this piece down which I'm not it's a really tight ratchet I'm gonna use a tool there we go and I can tell you it wasn't easy and if you're not gonna use it for gun mode I suggest not doing it close this bit again Make sure that's all nice, and then put that up like that. Bring this around and plug it in, and it probably should sit flush. Not 100% sure, but it puts too much stress on mine, so I'm not doing that. You can then remove the tail. Take your two guns, peg them in together so that you have two pegs on the outside, and this uh, this one's in the center. And then you insert it into this hole, which is not a good fit, but it will go. Bring these arms to the lower peg if they're not already there. And then bring the claws around to grab the gun. And then bring the legs, unpeg them from the side and bring them down so that they sit behind the shoulder. 
and then I guess that's it. And oh, and then you can take your handle and you slide that in uh, to this piece here. And then you can hold it. in his hand. If, uh, I guess I should have had it the other way. But, there. And I guess you can have this on here if you want, if it'll fit. But it, it's very, or, it's very, you know, it's very organic. You know, I'll give it that. It's very biological looking, like a biological weapon. Um, you know, I've always thought this was a bit overkill even back in the day. And then, you know, there's a foot that's coming with the next one, I believe. And you can use the foot to mount this on like a standing weapon. Uh, you know, it all works the same way, but the transformation is the same. We're going to do bot mode next. So just kind of open up all this stuff you got here. Get this out of the way. And we'll, we'll come back and clean it all up in the end. You want to untab the these feet here from the back. There. And open all this stuff up here. And just get it loose. And then you can see where the leg is on, on the bot. So just bring this whole bit down, split the legs, and remove this. And then we'll show you how to fix them. But these teeth come up. Now I'll show you the back. All right, so there's a lot of moving pieces here, which is why I wanted to show you this separate. But um, yeah, so you have it all filleted, so to speak. Bring this piece up, fold in the teeth, bring it through, collapse it back. Now I just want to this. I just want to make sure that that doesn't matter. Once that's done, you can collapse this and just keep this 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 uh, piranha hand out of the way. Then fold that up on the ball peg and wrap this around on the ball peg so that this. Uh, tab goes into that slot and then bring your claw your arm with the claw collapsed around to the back and that's one leg done now we'll show it again uh, because because it's just it is it is it's not complicated it's just if you don't know what you're doing there's a lot to move in here so fold in the teeth use this armature here to wrap through and collapse Bring this piece around, close it in, collapse this ball peg, and then wrap this around onto itself. And that's both legs uh, done. Now I've already started because this ratchet is so tight and you can see the damage I've done to it to try to get it to move. But untab this, bring this around, and then if, actually if you want you can flip this piece back already and get the head out and then close that. Bring this up, put that back. Be very careful with this piece. This piece is gonna break on me before it's all said and done. And there's that. Collapse the waist. Bring the shoulders up. And then open this up here. Flip these hands out. And close it back up. Same for the other side. And that's his arms done. Now for the back, just bring these armatures down, rotate the ball peg around, and plug them back in uh, to this port here. And then here you have some options. You can just fold this down and leave the tail off, which I think is probably the better idea. You can adjust these as you want. Or you can leave this out like this and plug this in and hang it, have it hanging off the back. That's just not the way that I would do it. I would just take it off. Uh, no need to pretend that it's 
it's not something it's not, or that it is something it isn't, rather. As you can see, he holds both of his accessory options just fine, so no worries there. We're going to toss those to the side. We're going to talk about the figure. Big yellow uh, light piping on a ball-jointed head on a ball peg, so you get a little bit of down. It kind of breaks up the sculpt a little bit. To not break up the sculpt, you don't really get any down at all. And a little bit up, once again, you can kind of break up the sculpt a bit and cheat it for photos and such, if that's your thing. But on the peg itself, it's very limited. And then the swivel is intact. And of course, big, ugly light piping on the back, but I know some people like it. I love the uh, facial expression. And the yellow paint on his, on his face looks good as well. It's like a sneer. It looks very menacing. We have a uh, waist swivel, and that's fine. Uh, the paint we've kind of talked about before, these teeth do look good on the chest. I kind of dig those. The arm articulation is great. So you got a hinge here inside the torso that gets you up to there and down to there that comes out to a separate hinge that gets you all the way up to there, which is an extreme motion for a transformer, um, and down to there. So it's a, that's a squeaky joint if that bothers you. It doesn't bother me. Um, bicep swivel. You got a double jointed elbow but it's a little funky either way i think that it doesn't really matter both hinges get you you know the full monty so i wouldn't let it bother you this is a little weird sculpt wise here it's like it's you know the elbow is jutting out a bit it's not the worst thing in the world it's just it, it is a bit unsightly uh for paint you know we can really look at it now not a lick on the shoulder not a lick on the bicep not a lick on the forearm wrist swivel little bit of an up and down ever so slightly they didn't even bother to paint that that's just lazy to me uh articulation is the same on the other side and it is pretty magnificent to be quite honest we got universal ratcheted universals for hips and they're great ratchets nicely done and then you have a thigh swivel built into the bottom of the universal. And then you have a double jointed knee that's also ratcheted that still only gets you 90 degrees, but I'll take it. Uh, once again, it could have used paint all down in this area. It, it could have really brought this thing to life. Um, and then you have the, the foot here. It's on a ball peg, so you get an ankle tilt up to a great degree, down to a bottom degree, and then... The rocker is a, is pretty limited. It is there. Now, you do get a, a wider rocker on the heel spur, so you, once again, you can cheat it, and I'll show you in photos or, or later on when we do final thoughts. But um, it is fairly impressive just how articulated it is for kind of carrying the bulk and mass that it has. I, I am kind of taken back by that. Um, it's fairly impressive. Uh, but it, it is plain. You know, it's different plastics breaking up the, the ensemble of the look, but it is fairly plain. There he is size-wise with, you know, the Hades bot and the Generation Toy Scavenger and a Masterpiece car. And I, I just, I feel like he's Masterpiece scale. Me personally, that's how I feel. I feel like he's not necessarily Masterpiece in design, but he's Masterpiece scaled. To get it to arm mode, you got to put the head down and put it basically back the way it was for every other mode. So I'm not going to show that because we've already shown it a few times. I'm just going to do it and we'll cut back. All right, so there we have it. Now we got to tuck the hands back away. So open that up, tuck the hands in, close that up. Same on the other side. And then rotate at the bicep 180 degrees so that they're now around to the back and plug them in to the shoulder. And that just means you get it adjust the elbow, the double jointed elbow that we just spoke about that's kind of bizarre. For the legs, you basically put them back in fish mode with the exception of the bottom jaw. So, just kind of start opening this up here. And this piece here. You can bring down the leg what am I doing here there it is Hold on. there we go just tuck it all the way around all right then bring the mouth back in on the inside make sure that this is back up to the top bring all this stuff around to the side 
and your foot is collapsed on the back. And I guess you really, you can tab that in. Now, you got to extend the waist also, so you might as well do that now. So, let's do it on the other side. Open all this stuff up. And then it comes around. And then you just close all this stuff back up. Just like we kind of started. I really don't like these uh, these thinner panels they went with. It just you add that to the ball peg, and it's just uh, frustrating. There it is. Tuck in these. You take this piece here and wrap it back around on itself, and it'll actually clip on to those, which is going to make pretty solid arm connection, like hand connection. So that's really inspiring. Um, you know, hopefully that'll all turn out all right. And then you can put the, the tail on here as well and, you know, whatever you want to do. But it is a pretty cool looking arm. It's unfortunate that like, you know, you don't think of him as an arm, I feel like most of the time, but it is a cool looking arm nonetheless. Final thoughts wise, I, I like it more than I thought I would. I'll be honest with you. I, 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 it moves better than I thought it would. It's a little bit more fluid than I thought it would be. I have a few complaints. Like I wish we could get more out of this this foot here, articulation wise. The figure is lacking paint in a major way. And at the price, I would have rather him not had five modes or whatever it is and just preferred that he had a combined mode a bot mode and an alt mode and the and the rest of that money went into this because that's, that's kind of what i've been getting at recently with these tfc figures is at a hundred bucks and i i hear everybody that says you can get them cheaper on ebay if you wait a week but i'm not talking about that i'm, I'm, I'm talking about the retail market I and mean, that's what we're comparing we're comparing new releases at the retail market right so at a hundred bucks, I don't know if it feels up to snuff. I think that when you have stuff like Ocular Max, stuff like Fans Toys coming out at a, a less than a hundred bucks for a product that feels a lot better than this, I, I think it's hard to make the sale that this is worth a hundred bucks. But I really do enjoy the figure. What I appreciate most about it are, 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 are two things really. It's, it's twofold. One is that for his bulk, his articulation is pretty smooth. I, I, I wouldn't have pictured his articulation being as fluent as it is from looking at the pictures. The other thing that I really appreciate is that for all of the, the five modes of transformation that I don't think are necessary, for me personally. Now, I know there's people out there that they're, that's why they're thriving on this. is because of all the possibilities. And I get you. I'm just talking about me personally. For all of the modes that it goes through the transformation to and from those modes is pretty easy it's fun like the leg transformation is fun and everything is kind of intuitive so it's kind of surprising given that it has so many different options now of course the options are a little fuzzy like the gun is kind of a gun you know what i mean the leg mode is kind of a leg mode but the arm mode is pretty impressive and and i think it's impressive that it pulls it off and it's not a nightmare to deal with overall the plastic feels different to me. It feels, uh, I don't know. It feels a little bit more polished than Hades, which I'm not sure if I like or dislike, but I definitely don't hate it or love it. So no harm, no foul kind of in a way. This piece here is going to break on me. If I, if I continue messing with this, I'm going to, I'm going to try, I got to, it's, it's a long story, but for future reviews, I'm going to have to transform it a few more times, but I'm going to be very dainty with it because it's going to break. It's absolutely going to break. But it's just that piece. Everything else moves really well, but that piece is, is a train wreck and, and will fail. I also want to make sure that I know, and I think I've said it before, but I absolutely love the little sneer of the face sculpt. There's a lot of character in that. I think it comes across nicely. So do I recommend it? 
I'd say it's a weak recommend for a hundred bucks. If you can get it for around 80, 60 would be, 60 would be a strong recommend. How about that? That sounds fair. 60 would be a strong recommend. 80 would be a recommend. A hundred is a weak recommend. But you know, it seems like every company is doing all of the combiners. So, you know, I'd say it's up to you. If you want to, if, if you're not comfortable with TFC or if you're not comfortable with previous TFC releases and you want to see what other companies have coming down the pike, I don't think it would be entirely ridiculous to, to, to wait it out. There's nothing about this that really wows me, but there's not a whole lot about this that I hate either. So, hope that helps. I know it's a little convoluted. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.